All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Vivica Von Rosen, who is in Colorado. How are you doing, Vivica? Excellent. And I love that we have the same branding colors. It's it's like I know, we it's the it's same company. <laughs> exactly. And the same shirts. I mean, it all And the so same shirt and almost the same mic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so don't let out the secret that none of this was coordinated because it makes it look really cool otherwise. We totally <laughs> plan this. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and Vivica, you know, helps sales professionals uh, create more qualified and quality conversations. And you work with Vengresso, who um, yes. we've had uh, we've had Mario on, on here before. So uh this is great to welcome another person back from Vangresso. What I wanted to talk today about is LinkedIn. And, you know, let's be honest, there's a couple of things I feel have happened with LinkedIn. Obviously, during the pandemic, a lot yeah. of uh, everybody was virtual and all that. So they were desperately searching for ways to prospect and connect. So people kind of flocked to LinkedIn. And, and then LinkedIn introduced that, uh, you know, that automatic email that pops up from people yeah. if you accept a connection request, which drives me nuts. Indeed. Uh, uh, and so it's almost like we had this perfect storm of LinkedIn introduced some tools and mm. people flocked to LinkedIn and we've got we've got a bit of a spam explosion going on. So yeah. I'm so I'm interested to hear from you, number one, your thoughts on that. And second off, how can you how can you maximize or optimize your use of LinkedIn, given that it's become so noisy? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, you know, I, I love that you said that and you're preaching to the choir, you know, companies were like, get on LinkedIn, but they didn't really tell people what to do. And so, yeah, if you go to your inbox right now, there's a bunch of invitations from people you don't know. And even if they're customized, like you said, it's with the, it's with the default invitation. Um, so that's number one bad. And then if you go to your actual inbox, it's probably filled with spam right now. So mm -hmm. that you know, that has given LinkedIn a really, really bad reputation. But how you counter that is just by doing things right. And how do you do things right? Well, you do like you would do in real life. I mean, I don't think, I hope in real life, you know, because we are getting back to some trade shows and some conferences and site visits and things like that. In real life, you wouldn't run up to someone, shove your business card in their face and say, you know, hire me. And yet, for whatever reason, people feel it's okay to do that on LinkedIn, i.e. inviting you to connect without telling people who you are or even earning the right to invite them to connect. And then once you connect, just going right into the sales pitch. So mm -hmm. what we recommend um, is, you know, work on LinkedIn like you would work in real life. Find your prospects on LinkedIn and then if they're active on LinkedIn, engage with them. If they're sharing posts, engage on their posts, build that top of mind awareness so that when you reach out to connect, you have, you have a foundation there. You have something to refer back to. Hey, you know, this is Vivica. I saw your great podcast that you did the other day, John, um, loved where you asked the question and your guest said this, um, would love to connect, right? So mm -hmm. now I'm showing you that you are important to me, that I have spent time on your content and I'm referring back to you. I'm not using some automated program. And it's a lot more yeah. likely that you'll accept the invitation. Yeah. Yeah. And, right? and so what, yeah, absolutely. Because what that shows is, as you said, is that you have taken an interest. You've actually taken the time to study the person you've taken the time to read yeah. their content because here's the other one I'm, I'm glad you touched on all that uh, the content and the commenting because the other thing that's also very annoying is when people say great post love it great insight and you know they haven't read it right exactly <laughs> I love when they refer to a book I didn't actually write or, yeah. you know, a podcast I didn't actually do. And you're like, OK, nice try. Um, hey, at least they at least they made a bit of an effort. But yeah, the yeah, like love the posts that you never read or, hey, we have this many people in common or, hey, we both belong to this group. Like I'll give you an E for effort, but it mm -hmm. I could, you know, it's just. I could tell it's probably automated or at the very least you, you haven't spent time on my profile. My favorite are dear sir, you know, like, <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> I, lo- I love it when people uh, contact me to sell me CRM systems and things. And I'm like, oh, huh? I know. Don't, I get that. Did you read my profile? I know. Um, but I did. Yeah. The big but the, the, pipeline, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, it, the, the other thing is that's, that's really interesting about yeah. this is that um, because there's so much noise and everything flying around yeah. that when that as 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 somebody on the receiving end, when you do suddenly see a thoughtful comment yes. posted, it stands out. It's like it's a big red flashing beacon and you go, wow. Yeah. And so it's so it's it, people need to understand that, that it's the, the hard work pays off. It really, it is not a quality. I mean, I mean, it is a quality. It's not yeah. a quantity thing. And that's why a lot of people, they try to take the easy way out by paying a little bit of money to automate this whole thing. And they get lots of numbers, but then they get a lot of people saying, you know, it, it actually hurts your reputation to use these automation type processes and these lead gen processes. And it might get your LinkedIn profile shut down, but to your point, and that was, you were reading my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say. If you, if you customize your outreach and you're actually responding to real people as a real person, especially if you're thoughtful about it, we have something called the PVC methodology, which is personalized add value and a call to action. And if you've taken the time to read through their profile. And again, we, we have a three by three strategy, which is simply look for three things in three minutes that you can, you can, you know, respond to that's really going to stand out. And what's cool about LinkedIn is there are other ways that you can engage through messaging. You can leave a voicemail, you can leave a video message. Um, and all of those things to your point, John would really help you stand out from all the spam out there. Yeah, and that, and that's why I I would really encourage people to start to take a thoughtful approach or work with yeah. folks like yourselves to understand how to have a methodology behind it, uh, because otherwise, even if you even if you try your best, but you yeah. don't you don't have a strategy, you're still not likely to stand out. Exactly right. Yeah. So, what are some of the other things that people can do uh, on LinkedIn to make sure that they are optimizing their use of it? Well, one thing I would recommend, and we should actually back up because before you ever engage with anyone, you really want to make sure your brand is strong. And again, the problem with the pandemic was, you know, companies were saying, get on LinkedIn. And a lot of people were jumping on LinkedIn maybe for the first time and had no idea how to create a good profile. Um, Or maybe they'd been on for a while, but all they did was like update their most recent job at the most recent company. But most folks have a LinkedIn profile profile that looks like a resume, because that's all LinkedIn ever tells you to do, right? So yep. if you looked at your profile right now, is it focused more on you or is it focused on your buyer? And if it's focused on you, it looks like a resume and it might look like you're looking for a job, which hopefully you're not. Um, but if it's focused on your buyer, then it becomes a resource. And so from your headline to your background image, to the about section, to the content that you upload in the featured section, All of that needs to be more focused on your brand, but more importantly, what your brand does for your buyer base. So like my headline doesn't say chief visibility officer or or, or CVO at -hmm. Vengresso because no one knows what chief visibility officer is and no one knows what a Vengresso is. Is it soup? I don't know. Right. And that would mean nothing to anybody. Wild wild animal up in the mountains. Yeah, exactly. Vengresso. <laughs> or stripper, I don't know, but yeah. you know, <laughs> it, it. But we have, you know, helping B two B. Well, actually, I think we just changed it. So helping B two B, B two B sellers create more quality conversations, prospect better, sell more, because that's our whole thing, right? Prospect mm-hmm. better, sell more. If I'm a B two B seller, I'm going, oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense, and I'm a m- lot more likely to read through the profile than if it said CVO of Vengresso. And mm-hmm. similarly. My featured section has all kinds of information that's going to help my audience be better at LinkedIn, be better at sales now, be better at social video. My, my, my LinkedIn profile is almost like a mini website. And so what I would recommend to our sellers out there is get together with your marketing team and say, hey, how can I make my LinkedIn profile more of a mini website. How can I focus on my buyers? What kind of resources would you recommend I share? Hey, can you help me create a nicer looking background image? And then utilize some of the cool new features like there's 
um, video cover stories, which I call the Harry Potter effect. So when you look at your mm-hmm. picture on LinkedIn and it starts moving all of a sudden, <laughs> that's the video cover stories. It's a 30 second advertisement. And if you don't like video, that's a whole other interview, by the way, if you don't <laughs> like video, you can always get a sales video, a 30 second sales video from your, um, from your mm-hmm. marketing team to upload in there. And then the other thing is it's an, there's it's name pronunciation, which John, you don't, I think, unless your real name's like John Golden, um, mm-hmm. then probably people call you the, by the right name, but me, yeah. Yeah. by the way, thank you for saying my name correctly. Me, <laughs> everyone bastardized my name. <laughs> Um, so I've used the name pronunciation, not only to let you know my pronunciation, Hey, this is Vivica von Rosen mm-hmm. with Van Gresso. It's not Vivica von Rosen with Van Griso. Um, <laughs> and then I, again, I have 10 seconds. So helping B2B s- sellers create better call. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Easy for me to say, you get where I'm going with this. Oh, so I totally got- get where you're going. And, and yeah. I love that. And I love, and I love the fact that, I mean, there's a lot of things to unpack there, but one of the things yeah. that you just touched on the last one is What you're doing there with recording your name and the pronunciation is you're you're making it easy for people because if somebody wants to because nobody wants to really you know call up and get your name wrong right so yeah yeah exactly so you're helping the other thing that I just wanted to go back to is uh, about your LinkedIn profile and the content. There's a number of things is absolutely number one like go go to your marketing people and get some help. I don't I don't understand why a lot of sales people just don't do that don't understand no. it um th- the second thing is it should be a living breathing thing yeah. so whatever you're putting in you whatever videos or additional content you're putting in if you go to your profile and you discover that you put them in three years ago and you haven't updated them then then instead of being the living breathing dynamic thing that it is it's now just as you said it's just a yeah. kind of dead resume yeah 100 percent and, and I love that because we, we really need alignment, not just for your LinkedIn profiles. Yeah. We just really need more alignment between sales and marketing and not just your profile, right? You need to be active with your marketing team saying, hey, you know, my buyer persona is actually, in my, our case, say my buyer persona is actually a B2B sales leader. You keep creating content for entrepreneurs and small business owners you know, guys, gals, we need to get aligned here and you need to create content for my buyer. Um, it's actually the reverse. My audience used to be entrepreneurs <laughs> and link and Van Gresso kept saying, Vivica, start talking to our actual buyer personas, the B2B sales leader. So, um, but you do, you need that alignment. And so that the quality and, and the content actually speaks to your audience, not to someone who can't afford you anyway. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy that it's uh, we're midway through 2021 and yeah. we're still to, and we're still talking about sales and marketing alignment. I Although know. I do say this every year. I think last year I said I can't believe it's 2020 and we're still talking about this. I know. Uh, and I think that that's that's such a key point because to be successful as a salesperson today, you have to have some micro marketing skills. You do, and to be successful as a as a marketing person, you need to understand sales better. So it just any organization or anybody who's listening, it's not an it's not a nice to have anymore. This alignment, no. and it's not so everybody gets along. It's critical. Yep, one hundred percent. It really yeah. is. And companies that don't understand that, I mean. They might not be around when we say, and sales and marketing alignment is crucial. And I can't believe it's 2025 and I'm still saying this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, the other thing that you touched on earlier, and I think it's a really important thing for people listening, particularly if you are if you have fallen into the spammy trap or yeah. you haven't got any guidelines, is you can get suspended and you can actually yeah. get suspended temporarily. You can get suspended f- for good. Uh, for good. Yeah. And and believe you me, like I've, I've from I've heard from people, it, it's a bear to try and get yourself back on. It really is. And don't email me because no one over at LinkedIn likes me, so I can't help you out. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, but I think but I think it's a, it's good for people to know some of the things that will get them. Uh, what, what are some of the things that will get them suspended? So things like um, inviting using automation systems. So if you're inviting 100, 150, 200, 300 people per day. LinkedIn is tracking that. So before you even get the people saying they don't know you and complaining about you, LinkedIn is tracking that engagement. So if you're using auto or (laughs) the opposite of engagement, pestering, um, 
so if you're using automation, uh, you know, keep it down to 50 a day or less, number one. Number two, too many people saying they don't know you and reporting you, um, that will definitely get you, uh, get you possibly shut down for good, depending on how much you do it. And then doing things like trying to game the system, um, putting things other than your name in the name field. Like I had one, one of the times my LinkedIn profile got uh, restricted. I didn't know. I didn't read the end user agreement. Who does? But I had Vivica Von Rosen, colon space, LinkedIn expert was my last name. And um, yeah, LinkedIn restricted my account because you're not allowed to put anything other than your last name, other than like designations, PCP, exact, et cetera. But, um, you know, don't put keywords in there. That's another one that'll get your profile shut down. Sending too many messages that get um, people saying this is spam again with the automation, not just invitations, but, but messaging, all of that LinkedIn is going to, is going to keep an eye on and potentially restrict or delete your account. Yeah. Multiple I, accounts. <laughs> Oh, multiple accounts. Yeah, multiple another... accounts is another one. Plus it confuses your audience because if two profiles show up, which one are they supposed to go to? Yeah, I have, I have enough difficulty figuring out who I am just as Yeah, exactly. As to trying to have multiple personalities or maybe I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's a conversation for another time. Um, but, but the other thing I was, uh, I was just going to, to highlight as well is, um, you know, so there's all these things that can, all these things that can get you banned and all of that. Yeah. But there are simple things that you can do uh, to make sure, as you said, to make sure that that doesn't happen. And and I think the key thing here is, yes, we live in a short, we live in a, a shortcut culture. Where yeah, yeah, everything is supposed to be easy, easy. Everything is supposed to be automated. Everything. And so don't get sucked into that because yeah. it's not true. That's that's 100 percent true. And I I mean, let's face it. I mean, when we go to conferences or trade shows. Is it more valuable to reach as many people as you can shove your business cards in their hands and hope that someone calls you back or to have maybe five, six, seven long quality conversations? I'm going to go with the five, six, seven long quality yeah. conversations. Right. But, um, you know, you. But on yeah. LinkedIn, definitely quality over quantity every day. Yeah, because we always remember back in the day when we were starting out that coming back from a conference and oh. showing showing that you had this massive like handfuls of cards, you were going, oh, look at all the cards I got. Yeah. And everybody's saying, that's awesome. And then, of course, like 99.9% .9 of them were useless, but it looked good. It looked good. So, and to that point, um, please use your CRM system. If you, you know, if you've connected with a new person and you've started a conversation, add them to your CRM system. If you, uh, you know, you don't have to add everyone you connect to, to your CRM system, unless you really want to. And only if you're kind of picky, if you're, if you're connecting to thousands of people a day, it's just going to muck up your CRM, but put it in there, designate where, you know, what the connection looked like, make some notes, uh, cause LinkedIn's great, but it isn't a CRM system in and of itself. Yeah. Even sales navigator isn't. So use your CRM system so that you are keeping in contact and you know where your contacts are and where you are in the sales process with your connections on LinkedIn. Yeah. And that's a great piece of advice because obviously you can get lost in LinkedIn. Oh, things yeah. can get buried and it's not great for, let's face it. I mean, it's not the, it's not the easiest thing to navigate when you're searching for things. I mean, they, they've improved it, but it's still, <laughs> for sure. it's, it's still got a ways to go. It's on still that. got so, a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Vivica, is there anything else? I mean, you mentioned some great tips there about the, the video and the, and the, uh, having your name, uh, you know, pr pronounced and all of that good stuff. Are there, are there any, are there any other kind of tools that maybe some people aren't aware of because I know they keep adding little things here and there. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're always coming out with new ways to share content too. So I'm guessing not many of the listeners are actually bloggers in and of themselves. They work for companies that have blogs, but if you do happen to write your own blog, there's always a few out there. LinkedIn has something new called newsletters. So it actually takes LinkedIn articles, which are like blog length posts to a whole new level. And it's getting unbelievable visibility, but it's a huge time commitment. So when you go into articles, um, you might see an opportunity and not everyone has it yet. You might see the option of creating a newsletter. If you've got that, then by all means, take advantage of that for the 90% of you who 
<laughs> who are listening to this and like, yeah, no, I'm not going to write a blog. Um, I would say anything new that maybe comes out on LinkedIn, not that they're new, but polls, LinkedIn really likes polls and polls are a great way to ask questions, get engagement and actually get some pretty valuable feedback from your audience. Plus LinkedIn likes them. So there's a better chance of more people seeing them. So make use of polls, uploading things like PowerPoints or PDFs that create carousels of information. Those tend to get a great deal of visibility. Um, and then if you have more of a marketing role, LinkedIn has embedded what used to have to pay thousands a month for Elevate into its program natively into its company pages where you can create content and recommend it to your employees. And all they have to do is click on the share button and it goes out and amplifies in um, inherent in, uh, native employee advocacy. So I know most of you like that went totally over your head and don't worry about it. It's not relevant to you, but um, if you are interested in LinkedIn's employee advocacy tool, just feel free to reach out to me after this podcast. I can send you some more information and I don't get paid yeah, for it, by the way. LinkedIn doesn't yeah, pay no, me. That, yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that sounds like a great tool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was laughing. I was just laughing when you were saying polls because actually one of the polls I did not too long ago was about those automated pop up. Yeah, emails. and it was over. Like I basically, and it was overwhelming. It was like about ninety nine percent of people said absolutely hate them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if LinkedIn saw it, but there's a little bit of user feedback for you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, so um, Vivica, this has been fantastic. Uh, we're bumping up the end uh, against the end of our time, and all yeah. of Vivica's information and Vangresso and everything will be below this video. But please, before we go, tell people a little bit more about yourself and how you help people. Sure. So Vangresso, we help B two B sales teams create more conversations on using LinkedIn. Um, whether you're an individual, uh, we, we've got an online program called Modern Sales Mass Modern Sales Mastery. If you go to moresalescalls.com, you can learn about that. It literally launched today. Um, and it just gives you a whole lot more content than what we used to do with selling with LinkedIn, selling with sales nav. Um, and it's cheaper. And uh, if you want to connect with me, just Google LinkedIn expert, my LinkedIn profile should show up, but customize the invitation and <laughs> let me know that you heard me on sales pop with John and I'd be happy to connect. Um, and then of course, just go to our website, vengresso.com. And if you go to forward slash resources, we have so so many resources there, including you can get a PDF, so you don't have to buy it. You can get a PDF of my latest book, 101 Ways to Rock LinkedIn for free. You just have to give us your name, email address, and first child. But after that, oh, it's all free. Excellent. I only have one child, so that's, well, it's okay. It's well, I'll take them or her. Can survive. <laughs> <laughs> we do ask for a lot of information to get the book. I'm just saying, but it is free technically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's fantastic. And again, I would, I would really encourage people to check it out because as we said at the beginning, yeah. when, when there's a lot of bad behavior around the good, the upside of it is good behavior stands out. So yeah, if you do things properly, you can stand out on LinkedIn amongst all the other noise that's going on. So I would highly encourage you to go check it out, check out Vivica's book. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us today. Some great insights. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you, John. Yeah. And I'll see you all again for another Expert Insight interview really soon. Thank you.